So, Nigel, great to be back at XYZ today. We've got a, a very different story. We've come to talk about 3D printing, but 3D printing that's very different to the norm. Um, Nigel, firstly, tell us what you've got here. Um, I think it's a Star Trooper helmet out of uh, Star Wars, but I'm not a fan, I don't watch them, so not 100% sure, but obviously we've got people here that are keen. Now, you, XYZ Machine Tools have got, gone into this um, new market for you, 3D printing. 3D printing with a difference, which we're going to find out a, a little bit more about in a minute. What, why did you go into it, Nigel? Well, I've always been interested in 3D printing, but I thought that in my working life, we'd never see anything fast enough, because it was for prototyping, and, and traditionally quite a slow process. But Hewlett Packard have come to market with the first production 3D printer designed to make functional parts. Now, before we go any further, you can see um, these machines at Mac, can't you? Mac 2018, in, yep. uh, which is just around the corner. And this is some of the parts that you're going to be showing there as well, so people will be able to come and see, yes. touch and feel what we've got. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, we'll be at Mac. And we'll also have some of the parts that have been plated, so you'll be able to see them chrome-plated and looking even better then. And you can paint them. And Hewlett-Packard have just come out with a new technology where we can do uh, multi-colour printing. Okay, so it's advancing quite quickly. Now let's look at some of these components because they're very different. I mean, for the, to start with, can you just pull this one up? Well, I don't know what it is, but it was printed all in one go, so there were, it's not an assembled part. It's a, it's a, a um, pr printed in one hit. Okay, then there's this other part here, which is w w HP make a lot of their components from the machines yeah, on I the think, machine. Yeah, I think that what happened is... Uh, it's the way people think and they've got to think in the future as we go more and more 3D printing. Um, this was a part that was in the first HP printer and they decided that they'd like to make a part. So this and this perform exactly the same function. This is a lot, lot lighter, strong enough for the job, not as strong as the aluminium but it doesn't need to be. And 60% of the 3D printer is printed on itself. So as they went into it, they found more and more parts were, were interchangeable and being able to be made of, um, of uh, these are a, P, a PA12 nylon. But Which we, is an industrial strength material? An industrial strength material. This chain link, we've got one that's slightly smaller than this that we've tested and it'll lift eight tonnes. This one, I would imagine, we haven't tested this, but I would imagine because it's a little bit bigger and quite a bit in cross-section, we've got, um, we probably lift, I would think, 12 to 15 tonnes. Wow, so definitely industrial strength. Now remember, you can see a lot of these, these parts here at the Mac show, so we're not going to look at every single one of them. But may, maybe let's, uh, I, I like this one, Nigel, what's, what's the story here? Well, this is a really useful item because this, I don't know if you can get in there, but this is a standard, um, adjustable spanner and the other end is a metric one <laughs> a bit of a joke there but uh, but the whole thing's been printed in one hit print in one hit you cannot disassemble that it was a, built in one one bit and it works as well and so it is this all printed in one hit absolutely fascinating this this one here the last one we're going to probably look at here quickly before we look at the printer there's got a ball, a ball in here isn't there well there's a ball in there i don't know if you can see it rolling around um but it was all printed in one go can you see the ball yeah we can just pick that out yeah i mean this is a similar item i don't get me too excited because this is a hinge printed in one hit but you printed those in vast quantities, and this is the story yeah. here. Yeah. What, what, what I want to go into now is we're going to move over to the actual um, the print, printer itself. Now, as we know 3D printing, we talk about it a lot, and what you tend to find is, as Nigel uh, said as we open this, people look at 3D printing as prototyping machines. This is very different now. How does this machine work, and how do you get the volume into it? Right. Basically, you've got a, a, a chamber that's a 16-inch cube, and you... You put the, the the item into the, you put the the build chamber into the into the unit, and it lays a layer of powder, and then it lays a layer of um, fusing agent, and it creates the parts and builds them. The really important thing about this is that in the 16-inch cube, um, I'm sure there's a metric equivalent, 380 by 380, um, we we can build anything in 10 hours. So all of that stuff would probably fit in the cube. And remember, you can stack things inside things. 
so you can get a fantastic quantity of components in there. Everything that isn't printed becomes recyclable waste. Right, we'll look at that bit in a minute. So, okay. so, so what we're saying here is you've got a cube and you can print. It do, there's not a specific cycle time for each part. It's basically the whole process takes 10 hours and it'll print whatever you put yeah. in there. Yeah, but at the moment, the one we're running here, we're only using quarter of a tank, so we're going to produce that in two and a half hours. So you can produce a single component in a, f in a few minutes. I, I don't want to get too bogged down in specs and all the rest of it, the machines, no. but do they come in different sizes? No, they don't come in different sizes. They only come in one size at the moment. Um, as people inquire about bigger and bigger machines, um, we will develop bigger machines. The technology is there now to build a printer that could print, I find this hard to say, but three meters by 10 meters to any depth you like. Wow, so then it really is production, isn't it? I tell you, Nigel, we're gonna come back to you in a second and we're gonna go over and see Mark because he's actually uh, operating here the, the software that is used. Um, Mark, uh, fascinating about the machine and some of the parts that you're making. So this is a, a, a visualization of what's actually happening in the printer at the moment. It is, yes, that's right, yeah. We're making these parts as we speak on the printer now. Okay, and how easy is it to put these parts in those positions? Does it do it all, all, all by itself or do you have to do that? I can show you here now. All we do is if we click on add part at the top of the screen there, and if I click on, I'm just going to pick this little gear up that um, HP makes. So this is called exhibition gear, open. It's added it into the uh, build. So if I just use the, um, the rotate and orbit so I can see it, I can move it around now if I like. So I can drop it down a bit. We drop it down to say Z150 and it drops down there. Okay, you did Z1509, but it doesn't make any difference. I know what you mean. Okay. Yeah. So, so you can position the, the, the parts wherever you want them in, in amongst that, that working area? Yeah, you certainly can, yes. Yeah. So not only positioning them, you can also scale them as well. So for instance, this chain link here, if you wanted it at 150%, I can use the scale button, put the part up to 150, enter, and we can get a bigger part or smaller part as needed. You don't even have to program these parts, you just import the drawings and then just position them wherever you want them. So you, you can optimise this by putting as many parts as you can in the area and get as much out of the printer as you can in 10 hours. Yeah, you certainly can. And it doesn't have to be individual parts either. Like the key rings we've got over here uh, are actually an assembly of three different components here. So they've got moving parts within them. So when they're printed, they will have movable parts. Incredible, fascinating. Uh, other CAM software work in conjunction with this? Yeah, any solid modeling software can save as an STL file, that's the native format, or there's the new function which is additive manufacturing, which is a 3MF file. Brilliant, okay, thank you very much, Mark. Right, now we're gonna go over uh, back with Nigel here to the sort of final part of the uh, jigsaw, really, in the process. So what's happening here then, Nigel? Right, well, what happens here is um, it's twofold. This is where you prepare all the material that goes into a build unit that goes into the printer. And when the printing's finished, you put it back in here and this cools the material and uh, this cools the material and then you unpack it. And by the words unpacking, anything that hasn't, if we look here, although there's a lot of gears in here, or key rings like this, um, the, everything that's not printed becomes recyclable material. So all the powder you see in here, there is some spare powder in here. Uh, this will get recycled and goes into this recycling drum. And we, we can use that again um, mixed with 20% brand new material. So does that mean the integrity of that recycled material is the same as what you're yes. putting? Yes. So the, an analogy I think of is a bit like when my kids are playing with plasticine and they're building things up and they're cutting the edges out and then they're adding it back in and it's the same thing isn't it yeah absolutely yeah and, and, analogy. and these are these are the parts then that you'll also be making or showing at mac yes we're going to be uh, we're going to be giving these away as as the uh, a reseller here nigel what do people need to buy uh, from you to make this work do they need to buy everything that we've seen here this morning well you can buy every item individually but what we've bought for our setup here is we bought the printer the processing station and we bought two build units that means the ones running in there now printing material and the other one it, well we've we, it's cooled overnight and we've just done a lot of key rings this morning 
the, the cooling is another part of it as well then, isn't it? That's yeah. always what they say with 3D well, printing. Tell me about that just yeah, before we yeah. close. Well, tr with traditional printers, where they get hot, it can take a long time to cool down. But this whole station is designed as a preparation and cooling unit. Brilliant. OK, so Mac 2018, just around the corner, you can see XYZ Machine Tools there uh, demonstrating the 3D printing there and see a lot of these parts. Absolutely fascinating story. And uh, if you want to go one step beyond that, you can now purchase these machines via XYZ Machine Tools. Thank you very much, Nigel, for your time. Yeah, we're doing demos, by the way, um, in our showroom in Devon uh, for customer parts. So if they've got STL files and they want us to make a part, we'll make them a part. We'll tell them how long it takes to make it, how many it can produce in a 10 hour cycle and the cost of the actual part. That's a no brainer, so if you have got components you think that lend themselves to this type of technology, get in contact with the guys here and come to this fabulous facility. I believe you're going to be glassing this area off aren't you in the near future and yeah. making this into a cell? Yeah, when we come back from uh, Mac this will have all been tiled and be a nice glass showroom, even with the red girder enclosed. Good stuff, thank you very much Nigel. Thank you.